black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah, fuck with me. What's going on guys back with a, another cooking slash mukbang video it's been a while since we've done it and uh, I'm excited for this one I've never ever tried my hand at cooking anything Asian inspired influenced I've wanted to do this for a long time uh, orange chicken on noodles Toronto or Canada may, correct me if I'm wrong maybe Vancouver I'm not sure but Panda Express I don't think is a thing in Canada and I always wanted it but unfortunately Canada is whack when it comes to fast food the game is weak I think it came up pretty well I have some like bullshit egg rolls over here that are just freezer sweet and sour sauce bought from the aisle but this is all, all legitimately homemade as you saw and just before we get into this I'm just gonna let you guys know that we're gonna get into a couple little stories about jobs that I've been fired from and kind of just like the background and the story behind the firings I've been fired from mostly every single job I've had I feel like I feel like the only thing that indicates is I should probably just be my own boss and I'm slowly but surely working on doing that Let's see how my chopstick game is pretty weak so far let's actually just get a piece of this chicken up close and personal. Mmm, what do you guys think of that? Looks pretty good to me. Wow. I'm impressed with myself. I didn't know how this was going to turn out, to be honest. If you hear any snickering or laughing or coughing or whatever, um, Miss Hoodie is in my room with earphones on, pretending not to listen to me. I have sneaking suspicions that she's taking little pauses to listen in on my video. But who knows, maybe she's going to respect and stay lo loyal to the game and not do that. But it doesn't really matter. I don't really care if she hears or not. All right. So, yeah. Just a little rundown of this. Noodles are great. Chow mein noodles. Put a little soy sauce with them. I'm getting that saltiness, the um, mm, the freshness of that green onion, cut all beautiful on the bias there. Very good, chicken perfectly cooked. I can really, really taste that ginger in there. Ginger is shining through. The chili flakes are giving it just a little kick, a little heat, a little nuttiness off the sesame seeds there. Really, really good. Sweet, spicy, tangy, sour. This 
Still, my chopstick game is very weak, though. Got myself a nice little ginger ale here. Schweppes, not Canada Dry. Schweppes. Got the ginger ale, of course, because that's the sick pop when you're a little bit sick. You Back in the day when I was a kid, it was always ginger ale. So I carry it with me. Lit cigarette, anybody? Lit cig. These are the freezer aisle. And you know what? I'm actually quite impressed. They're beef and pork and vegetable. But they are surprisingly great. Almost better than actual restaurants, like Chinese places that I've had. That's crazy. Let's get into some stories about getting shit canned from jobs. If you've been shit canned, I'm sure you probably have. It's pretty common. If you skate through life without getting shit canned, I don't know what you're doing right or wrong, but it seems impossible to me. But whatever. If you have any stories, leave them down below in the comments. It's always interesting to hear other people's experiences. One of my favorite ones and kind of most recent ones was a few years back, I guess about four years now, I was a uh, server in a restaurant, like a high-end um, pizzeria, but really nice, like good Italian food, wood-fired pizza is what I'm trying to say. And so I'd worked there for like two years, mm, actually two and a half years at this point. And uh, this new hotshot bartender came in and I think he was like about my same age, but he was all super you know, the restaurant industry is my life. I'm going to be in this industry forever. I am the best bartender. I hold myself to a very high standard. Kind of pretentious fuck, essentially. This got me sweat. Those chili flakes are kicking in. And so anyways, for... Whatever reason, I don't know. I guess he was like kind of handsome, and um, everybody at, at the place really were like jumping on his bandwagon. They're like really riding his dick, and I'm the only, basically one of the only ones that didn't. I didn't dig his vibe. I was like, this guy's pretentious. He doesn't seem cool at all. Like, I don't know why you guys like him at all. Like, he and he wasn't even really killing it that hard. Like, he didn't stand out to me during service as any better than anybody else that was on bar. So, one shift, um, there's like, the servers have their like closing duties and stuff, and then the bartenders have their like area and closing duties. So, as a server, I was done everything I was supposed to do. We were just waiting on the bar to finish up and cash out so we could all pool our tips and figure out like who owes what and whatever, whatever. So I went upstairs, was the third floor uh, on the restaurant where we got changed and everything, staff room and like a meeting room and a bunch of the cooks were having their like everybody gets a drink after work they're having their beer up in the room up top and uh i had one last little thing to do and that was to switch over a keg and when you switch over the keg there's like a line that you have to press like a bleed line that has like some excess beer in it you have to clear that out and so it runs off into like whatever you drain it into so I just drained it into a little cup and like I had like I wouldn't say like less than a juice box less than half a juice box worth of beer in this cup and I went and like sat and joined the, like the cooks chilling and had a, just like a little beer and he, this dude came upstairs the new guy and he was like walks in he's like 
Okay, I, and also I've worked there for two and a half years. He's worked there for two months. It's like, what are you doing? I'm like, uh, just chilling with the boys. Like, uh, just waiting for you guys to finish up on bar because like we're done. I'm waiting for you guys. So I'm just like chilling, relaxing, having a little a little beer. It's like you're up here drinking while on the job and there's still a ton of work to be done downstairs. I'm like, mm, no, we're done our work, but you guys aren't. So like when you're just, you guys are done, you know, holler at me. He's like, you're unbelievable. I'm like, you're fucking unbelievable, dude. I've worked here for two and a half years. I'm pretty sure I know like what the protocol is. You've been here for two months. Like, don't come up here trying to act high and mighty and tell me what the fuck to do because like I got way more experience than you in this building. And he's like, you're a fucking idiot. Or like, I don't know, he like freaked out. Went downstairs. Beelines it to my manager. My manager is also my same age, so we're all like the same age at the time. He goes to the manager, he's like, he's drinking upstairs, on the clock, um, you know, I don't know where he got this beer from, looks like he like found and poured a beer for himself or something, blah, 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 next day I come in, the people, like the owners of, of the business, one of them, like the GMs, like the, or sorry, the GM and like the owner were like, uh, we're going to have a talk with you upstairs in like the boardroom or whatever. I'm like, okay. So they pull me in. They're like, so we heard last night you were, you like stole a beer and we're drinking on the job or something like that. I'm like, okay, let me like outline it for you guys. I tell them the scenario. They're like, well, unfortunately, that is theft from the company and against policy to, like, be drinking while you're signed in and everything and all that. And I'm just like, and so they're like, we have to let you go or whatever. I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you serious? Like, I was on the second floor. There was no guests in the restaurant anyways. We were closed. We had been closed for, like, an hour. And I had like a morsel of beer from changing the keg. Wow. Like, how is that such a problem? Anyways, <clears throat> I talked to my manager later, the guy that he like ratted to. And I was like, bro, like, what the fuck? Like, I thought you, we were good. Like, why would you, why would you go up the chain of command? Like, why would you even report that as a thing? He's like, well, I felt like I was in a hard place because like, if I didn't see anything, then... I look like a weak pushover ma of a manager and like who he, he might just bring it to uh, management himself and throw me under the bus and then I lose my job or whatever. He's like, so I was in a rock and hard place. And I was like, you, you, dude, you're so fucking whack because there's been times in the past where he had done the exact same thing that I had done. My manager, my manager, like while changing a keg had like, poured the excess off the line and like had drinks like the same way that I did. <laughs> so I was like so vexed at him. I still hate that guy to this day. Fuck that. Fuck both of those guys, to be honest. Like definitely fuck both those guys. The high and mighty bartender guy that essentially got me fired was, uh, he, he did end up opening a restaurant with somebody, but it failed. Another good one was I used to do car auto detailing. So people bring their cars in at the car wash, but like they would bring them into the car bay, into like the bay. And I'd have like all day to do two cars, like one in the morning, one in the afternoon or whatever. And you like, you just completely do like clean out people's cars, like just try to make it look brand new essentially. 
and I fucking hated that job. That job was weirdly, actually really difficult, very hard, very labor intensive, very like kind of hard on the body. Like it just, customers always complain because they expected their car to look brand new, but it never would because it's just, like, it's impossible. Like your car will never look brand new, even if you get it like professionally cleaned. Like you just can't get it back to new, but my boss at that job was like, like a late twenties guy, he was a fucking tank. The only guy was like six five, six six, just burly as fuck. Hugest dude, like you know, lifted weights and shit. Like he was just a strong ass guy. And we used to have a lot of like male banter back there, I guess. And he was down to like kind of fuck around and like getting little like tussles and stuff and. Sometimes we get in like fights with like spray bottles and shit with chemicals. <laughs> Not smart. But nothing that we use was like gonna fucking kill you or whatever. But one day I remember him and I got in like this like match and I was like trying to like try just trying to like even budge him. And like he wouldn't budge and like he was just like I was just getting so vexed at him. And then we got in like a spray bottle war and then he got me with like this like shit in the eye. And it was like, my eye was like fucking so painful. So I like chilled out for a while. And I like planned a surprise attack of like a bucket of hot soapy water. And I was going to like wait for him to be unsuspecting, come around the corner and just like, just douse him in it. I guess he was on guard enough. He knew, like, I was going to try to get him back or whatever. He, like, came around this corner, and there was, like, all the lineup. It was, like, a really hot, sunny day. And there was, like, two lines of cars waiting for the car wash. And I, like, he came around this door, and I, like, half got him with it, but he kind of dodged, but half the bucket. And he, like, started running, but he ran out through the cars. And so... <laughs> I chased them with the bucket because in the heat of the moment. So we ran through all these customers watching us and I'm fucking have this bucket of soap and this guy bolting through and me like trying to huck a bucket of like soapy water at my manager. <laughs> and uh, like he evaded me and shit. And then after I stopped and looked around, there's like all these people like, what the fuck was that about? And then so the next shift, I came in the next morning. It was like a doom gloom shitty day. I did not want to go to work at all. I, at this point, I was like completely over this job. I just didn't fucking care about it. And um, I came in and like the like the main ass manager dude was just like, it's like, hey, uh, yeah, we're just we're not gonna need your services here anymore. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Honestly, fair enough. See you later, man. Thanks. Like, I actually hate this job. So <laughs> have a good one. Good luck with like your new employer or whatever. <laughs> so I was like happy. Actually, that day I was so stoked. I got in my truck. I left and I was just like, yes, I went home and I was just like, I'm so glad I don't have to fucking go there today. So there was that. And then another quick, really quick, funny one was actually my first job ever. I was a cart bitch um, at Zeller's. I used to have to go collect carts, but I didn't have like the machine or whatever. I had to use like a rope. And it was honestly a fucking hard ass job. Like I'd like troll like a, such a huge, like a huge mall inside and outside all around it in like October. Pushing these lines of carts that like don't move. Like they don't steer. Anyways, I used to carry a radio with you. And uh, one day... Like, I was pretty slack at that job. I was, like, I always called in and shit. Like, I just, I hated it. I didn't want to go to it ever. And, um, I remember one day, like, I, there's this guy that I knew that was working in a kiosk in the mall. And I was heading out to, like, do my rounds to go get shit. And there's, like, the front of the, the, the Zellers. And you walk. And then there's, like, this kiosk right in front of the Zellers. Like, I'm such an idiot. But I was 17 at the time. So, whatever. I'm just sitting there for, like, a half an hour shooting the shit with this buddy of mine. And uh, I get like a page on my manager, or a page on my uh, 
radio and my manager is like he's like uh, hey uh where are you right now and i'm like i'm like uh like all slick i'm like oh yeah just out uh on the west side um over by sport check i'm getting uh i'm getting some cards and he's like no you're not i'm like what He's like, I can see you. I've been watching you for 20, 30 minutes standing there talking to that guy at the kiosk. Turn around. And <laughs> I turn around. He's just standing there watching. And I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, sorry about that. And he's like, just come here. And then, like, we went and had a talk. And then he's just like, yeah, like, you're done. <laughs> he's like, I need somebody who's actually going to go do the job. And again, I was like, that's fine. I fucking hate this job. I'm out. Peace. I'm 17. I don't. I don't have any dependents. Like I, this, this money is strictly for weed and food. <laughs> I don't really need it that bad. Peace, man. And then after that, I got a job at Pizza Hut, and I fucking love that job. The people were cool as fuck. It was a good job. I liked the job. I killed the job. And I worked there, and then ev the that store eventually closed down. All right, well, that was actually quite good. I'm pretty impressed with myself on that. Like I said, I'm sick. I'm a little bit under the weather. Not on my A-game, per se. Um, hope you enjoyed those little higher fire stories. Maybe if you have some, leave them down below. Until the next one, though, eat good, live well, stay true. Peace.